Hey, I'm Dan Fitzpatrick, StockMarketMentor.com, and I want to look at General Motors. Now, um, I, I haven't looked at this stock in forever, um, and uh, but now it's kind of getting my attention, to be honest with you. The main reason is because I saw it mentioned in Investor's Business Daily uh, about their EV super truck. Okay, great. Um, but what I'm really seeing is, is, you know, this pattern here. Okay, this is kind of a, this line here, you can kind of draw it loosey-goosey. It can go, you know, down there. It can go up here. Uh, you know, any number of ways. The, the um, drawing of support and resistance lines is, in my view, as much of an art as it is a science. You really kind of have to have a sense for the price action. So this would be mine here. And as I'm, I mean, I'll just cut right to the chase. I think this is a stock that you could consider buying, but just not right now. Uh, it's, it's at a real risky place. You look at um, the weekly chart and you really get the sense that this is a key breakout. Hence, like I said, I, I think it's a stock that you can buy. Um, it doesn't quite fit my template. You know, I've got a, a Mark Minervini. Uh, type approach. I learned this from him. The first thing that I see um, is that the 200-day moving average is just, just started turning up, and that's fine. Um, the stock from a 52-week high is within reach here as well. So from that, you know, on that respect, it, it's really good. There's, there's a lot of reasons to like this stock, to like this pattern. Um, I like this volume breakout here. This gives me a lot of confidence that this is institutional buying. I mean, it hit 40, 40 million shares uh, on this day. So this was a big breakout day. This was the first hint, really, that the stock was, was going to come close to, to breaking out 30. And then the very next day it did. But then you get this huge follow-through day. This is big buying. And so I believe... From everything that I see here, I believe that this stock is going higher. But I also believe that the stock is 14% or so above where it broke out. That's typically a time where somebody who bought the breakout would be looking to sell. They'd be tapping on the brakes a little bit, pardon the pun, and looking to take profits. So what I would suggest doing is... You know, I'll, 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 I'll draw a line here and then, uh, you know, I'll draw a line down here. And then what I'll do is I will set an alert for a month and then I'll set another alert down here <coughs> for a month. And so then, frankly, I can, I'll only get alerted to this stock when it comes back to a point where I really want to be watching it, particularly down here. And you can say, well, why aren't you setting an alert up here or up here? I'll tell you why, because I can't buy the stock. It just doesn't fit my rules for actual entries. As far as looking to the stock to buy, absolutely, it does in so many ways. I like the fact that it was squeezing very close to the 50-day moving average. Those, I love those things. Now, uh, it's not in a phase two uptrend or a mature uptrend because uh, this hasn't been, um, you know, these moving averages haven't been in this situation the way they are now for very long. So this would be, even though the stocks run quite a bit, it would be an early entry for a long-term trade. However, the entry is literally everything. That's, if you're in a stock at the right time and the right price, it's going to be an easier trade. It still might not make you money, but if you're in at the right time and the right price, then you risk very little money because you're getting out um, early. Um, but if, if you're correct on it, the trade's going to get really easy. All I'm saying is this is a stock that right here, right now, you can't buy. Um, the best time, frankly, to be buying, if you were watching it, and I sure wasn't, uh, I couldn't buy it on this day even, uh, not the way I would go. I mean, maybe, maybe a little bit, but honestly, probably not. And I wouldn't, um, hang on, 
you know, I, I wouldn't be buying it here because I would look at this as, you know, coming off the bottom, but it's General Motors and, you know, it's only slightly more interesting than General Electric. So I wouldn't have bought it here, even though it would have been a great trade. Um, but as the stock gets up here, now I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it. And so this might get my attention. You look at the volume here, boom. Now it would get my attention on this breakout here. Um, again, you have to be looking at it. I, I'm very, very careful in my videos here that I don't want to give you the impression that uh, I'm talking about all these wonderful trades that I made. I didn't see this stock. I missed, the, I missed this trade. Um, so now I'm looking at it and going, crap, I should be buying this stock. Well, I can't. Okay. Uh, now I definitely should be buying the stock. Well, glad I didn't. And so now at this point, what you have to do is just wait for the entry. Sometimes the best trades that you make are the trades that you don't make. You just have to wait. And so I know that if I wait long enough, I'm going to get some kind of a pullback to a buy point. And, you know, if I have to wait for the stock to come back to 35, if I can ride it to 70, I'll take that, you know, but buying it up here doesn't make me uh, have much of an advantage. So um, anyway, members, I have created a, a different type of video for you this weekend. Um, you just need to watch it. It's, it's all about a very, very simple technique to help you keep your objectivity because I guarantee you the losses, the big losses that you're taking, the ill-advised trades that you're making, they're doing it because you're not objective in how you look at stocks. You are subjective and it's like, oh, I got a hunch on this one. I'm going to go buy a bunch and see what happens. Um, so this video today will totally keep you out of that uh, bad feedback loop. Okay. All right. See you on Monday.